going to be an exciting one, both uh, trying uh, to, you know, fight the top uh, expected decks uh, with strategies that they are familiar with, uh, and it seems to me that Usman might have won the roll. Uh, yeah, and he does start things off uh, right away with one of the older ones. He's playing a lot of different Pendulum cards, I can tell you that much. Uh, he has all the, obviously, Dragon Slayer engine alongside uh, some of the new Magic Spectre cards, and uh, yeah. That obviously can lead to a lot of different uh, end fields. Uh, and, uh, you know, something that recently came back. Uh, I was thinking about that Magic Spectre, yeah. Kieran. It's on its way back. I mean, I'm actually seeing Astrograph Sorcerer, which is possibly even more impactful yeah. than the Kieran, to be honest. But, like, because Kieran was such a powerful card at the time, but maybe nowadays, you know, one bounce per turn is not quite what it used to be. I guess we'll find out, but yeah. I mean, Usman knows uh, what he's doing a lot better than us. And he's going super fast. <laughs> I mean, which is something that I'm actually not that surprised. When you see these uh, uh, not, uh, you know, super expected, super popular decks, uh, usually it means that the player is super comfortable with it. They have been playing it for a while, and you can tell by the speed that Usman knows what's up. So, yeah, he's pendulum summoning, and we're going to see possibly all of the uh, Draco Slayer. Oh! Okay. Gares. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I was expecting just to special summon because the Ignister is not once per turn. So you can special summon uh, again from deck. Uh, this is crazy, this uh, Ignister. Not once per turn. You can just summon it again and again. And you just keep summoning more and more monsters from your deck. Yeah. Like other kinds of effects. Wow, we even see. Wow, <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> That's nice synergy. Yeah. Uh. Uh, yeah, the princess brings it back. Like, how many times are we going to see this uh, Ignister effect resolved? You can run multiple copies in your extra deck as well. Like, yeah. it just replaces itself and replaces itself. And and we'll oh, no, he's going to use it again. again. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Uh. Wow. And yeah, as you can see, we did mention it. Not once per turn. This is like the fourth <laughs> time that it's summoned. <laughs> this is really not once per turn, yeah. isn't it? Like, is he gonna, he's going to summon it again somehow. He's got to, right? As soft as it get, yeah, it is. Because uh, now we just uh, can bring it back, yeah. No, but Cross Sheep has to summon level four or lower, right? Yeah, yeah. But he's considering his options, uh, and yeah, we might just uh, summon another one though. Because uh, why not? <laughs> that can be the case at the same time. Uh, nope, doesn't seem like it. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what's about to happen now. Is that a firewall dragon? Or one kind of firewall dragon. I feel like that took quite a lot of link materials, that firewall. So maybe it's not the original. Yeah, it's the singularity. And uh, actually a link six. A link <laughs> six? <laughs> That's wow. That's like a pretty sick uh, combo that is uh, coming down here for Usman. Uh, and the speed is just <laughs> crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. He's just going at it. Singularity. It's cool to have a Link 6 because often now with like the princess, players are just like ending on a Link 4 and there's not really anything to do with the extra Link material. He appears to have... Is this an extra Link? Wow. Yeah, it points both ways. So it's just an extra Link. I was wondering if he was just getting a bit confused, but I think we're the ones that are yeah. confused as to what is going on right now. Uh, I've never seen a U-Link like, uh, with, yeah. with the two arrows, but I suppose I wasn't aware that... There was a card that had like two up, up pointing arrows. This is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this. Another summon, and you can see Matthew just, uh, you know, shyly asking some questions, but wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I was thinking just as he did it, like, th back in the day, obviously, when people were first doing the extra link combos, we, we were in a different master rule, and in order to summon anything from the extra deck, you needed to have a. Uh, you needed to start in the extra monster zone. Now that's not the case for most types of monsters, but for runic cards in particular, you need to summon it to the extra monster zone. So not having access to the extra monster zone could yeah. be really annoying. This is uh, crazy. And uh, yeah, it has been a while ever since the, the Goki deck, for what I can remember, that we, we saw an extra link. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Paguska does work. <laughs> Just uh, adding uh, a little bit more. And as you can see, this is... So well played by Usman. What a field. Uh, that is incredible. And now he's just explaining uh, the amount of interruptions this Baguska <laughs> is so annoying to deal with, uh, but doesn't do anything negative to Usman uh, and field. 
Yeah, he's got everything, right? He's got wow. the Trigate Wizard to negate. He's got the Pit Knight Earl to negate. He's got the Seal. He's got the... That's impressive. Baguska, like, Baguska alone can annoy a lot of decks into submission, I feel like, but... I'm <laughs> sorry for uh, mentioning that Yubel as the best uh, end field. Yeah. Like, look at this. Wow. And, uh, yeah, again, the speed was, uh, was incredible. And uh, now it's Matthew's turn, but it's going to be tough. I guess the Runic deck has some hope, because if you mention that, obviously, you can't special summon Yugin, at least, though, you have cards like, uh, you know, uh, cur Freezing Curses uh, and, uh, you know, Flashing Fire, which can allow you to just uh, potentially disrupt uh, this extra link. But, yeah, it's going to be a tough mission regardless. Yeah, this is one of those uh, places where the Runic Engine kind of shines. A lot of players quite like having cards <laughs> in their deck as when they're getting yeah. a kick out of seeing Medallion of the Ice Barrier. Uh, thinking uh, he w he's normally the one who, uh, who has to explain his cards to the opponent, but uh, he's probably going to need a lot of yeah. cards explained to him as well. But yeah, like it's nice to have those Engine cards that also act as interruptions going second. Uh, we might see that classic combo of like freezing curses plus evenly matched, might do the trick. Although I'm not sure what interruptions this uh, firewall dragon offers. We're just trying to figure out, like you yep. guys at home, which ice barrier card this is. Is that a Gorgias Swordsman of the Ice Barrier? Oh no, it looked like General Wayne yeah, actually. Yeah, should be General Wayne. Uh, so it says spells and traps sent from the field to your opponent's graveyard are banished instead. So very good in the mirror match. <laughs> 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 and. Uh, you yeah, can it special it from yeah. your hand if your opponent has a monster a bit like a cyber dragon. And then if it's normal special summon, you can add an ice barrier spell or trap. So that is pretty good because yeah. that can just get another medallion, I guess. And yeah, as expected, uh, we do uh, go and find this flashing fire, which at the same time is great news because unless they uh, you know, are drawn fountain, since you can't access Yugin, you kind of wanted to use the tip to get the fountain. But yeah. Um, yeah, it can be, I mean, drawing tip is excellent because, yeah, as you say, it gets the fountain without having to go via Hugin, and Hugin's a lot more liable to get interrupted than uh, any other, and or I than a tip. We have pointed at the singularity, but it's going to get negated uh, by the Trigate, and uh, what just happened to the Trigate wizard? Something happened. No, I think he, he used the... Oh, he used the spear? Did, Did it just come back, the Trigate Wizard? No, I think he just used the Spear to tribute the Trigate. Uh, yeah, and then... Uh, that's oh, a crazy that's a combo. Uh, yeah, yeah, so he used the Sphere to tribute the Trigate, and then the Firewall Dragon brings back the Trigate. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and now... We d hang on, what did the Curses point to, though? No, he activated the Destruction on the uh, Firewall. Oh, and then it got negated yeah, and by... Got negated and, and then, then he, he used it. I guess... I guess Trigate's probably not once per turn. So the seal just kind of refreshed the Trigate after it was used. There was no, like, dodging the... Uh, no. I guess he could have chained the, the curses, but still in the previous chain, but I guess decided not to. And, uh, yeah, it is reset, although... Let me check something... Yeah, no, it's actually not at all uh, hard words per turn, so you can just use the Trigate again. That's crazy. I suppose, yeah, we could have done curses on the Firewall Dragon, as you mentioned, while the Trigate Wizard was oh, still yeah. in the graveyard. But what do we do with against this Baguska, too? Like, all these other cards we're thinking about, and there's still just a Baguska. It's definitely not going to be easy, and I can't really think of a way for any deck to deal with this uh, unless they draw cards like Dark Ruler no more, or a way to just, you know, yeah, it back. Yeah, evenly matched is probably the card of choice that's in Matthew's deck, but uh, without it, it's going to be a big struggle. Yeah, and again, like, you can set up two Trigate, so... Yeah, that's really neat, actually, because a lot of players love to just... You know, because you you can't you don't want to go evenly matched and then have it negated and then chain the curses because then you have multiple uh, cards on the field and your opponent gets to keep more monsters from the evenly matched. So you kind of want to use your negation first, but that could catch a lot of players out that you can just negate and then summon the trigate again. Yeah, that's a really neat interaction that we have never seen. 
and it yeah. reminds me of uh, Toad and uh, Sprite Elf, but I suppose Sprite Elf yeah. <laughs> not allowed in the TCG at the moment. But yeah, just resummoning that negation. I suppose you can do it with Sprite Double Cross. So, and you know the thing is, for how good the runic spells are, uh, trying to deal with uh, you know such ending field, not having a battle phase makes this significantly tougher to to even try to deal with. Because, yeah, this seems like it's about it. I think we are just setting a card and passing a play back to Usman, yeah? So not at all an easy task to, you know, fight back against this. Uh, uh, yes, special summon from, yeah, it's going to detach one <laughs> from the Duska. Oh, he has to skip his main phase one, right, for the Dukaras. So everyone's skipping phases, left, right, and center. Yep. But now again, we have the singularity ready to shake things up. Uh, again, link six. <laughs> so that comes with, you know, a lot of uh, really good cards. But I think he has chained the freezing curse, but that has been negated. And so you can use the firewall to uh, pretty much return to the end uh, cards. And yeah, this is pretty much it. It basically returns cards up to the different types uh, of, uh, you know, in this case, uh, extra deck monsters that you have. So just sent you back. And uh, looks his deck is worth uh, Usman's. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for some Ice Barrier action. Let's see what he opens up. A uh, little bit of a shake of his head, I think. But hopefully not that bad. Uh, we do have a Runic, so. Do you think Matthew's just one of those players that, you know, looks at the hand, shakes the head and does full combo? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think we've all <laughs> played with people like that who look at their hand and it's not of absolutely course. perfect and yeah. they go, oh, you know, it was terrible. <laughs> Very different uh, concept. Oh, are we going to see an Ash? No. Okay. We get to the fountain. The most important uh, Exactly. Piece. And for Matthew as well, like, I mean, maybe he doesn't know the full suite of hand traps that Usman is running, but once you've activated and resolved Hugin, like, there's no retaliating C, there's no Fuvalos, there's no, you know, shifter, there's no anything yeah. big that could come down, would have come down on this Hugin. And I feel like most players would just negate Ooh. Hugin as well, if they could. So yeah. probably almost nothing, right? And yeah. Totally agreed, but wow, the Ash was actually held. Uh, interesting. I did think he had it and uh, decided to wait, and this could be brutal, because if Matthew goes for this Lumber, it might mean that he doesn't have a Tuner to play and to get rid of this Yugin, so this could be it. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Like, he's used, what, three cards to do this so far, so he's got yeah. two remaining. What do you think of the Ash? Would you have Ash the Yugin, or? I feel like I'm an Ash. Ash the Hugin kind of player. Well, what's going on? I've got a tribute, tribute summon. summoning. Wow. Is that the, the Wayne again? Can add uh, mm. when it's. I think it's. Yeah, it's adding uh, the medallion. Yeah, so yeah, it's probably. No, it's, it's Wayne. It's a pretty good play here. Now, if you've got any more runic cards to follow up, you'll be able to use it next turn because your extra monster zone is empty. But yes. Yeah, uh, to answer your question from before, I think I, I quite like Ashing the Hugin, just preventing the fountain, uh, because otherwise, you know, your opponent's still going to have a pile of runic spells in the grave, and then if they ever mm. resolve one, the fountain's going to be there. Whereas, like in this case, right, you would the fountain. The difference would just be that the fountain's just in the deck rather than yeah. on the field. Uh, it's close, I guess. Yeah. Th there was also some merit whether Matthew, I guess he wanted to draw into a tuner, but he could have also gone for the Wayne first and then use, uh, you know, its Lumber to just special summon and maybe extend his plays a little further. But yeah, I, I don't know how different, like what kind of different plays. But yeah, again, shaking his head. It doesn't seem like Matthew is that happy with this. Well. Yeah, so he's added it's George's. Yeah. yeah. So what does it say? While well, you control another Ice Barrier, you can only use each effect. Uh, if you control an Ice Barrier monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And then if it's special mm -hmm. summoned, you can get a level five or lower. But I don't think he has any nope. other Ice Barrier monsters he yet. He does not. And you can see it again, not 
too happy with this. Uh, I think he's it's oh. also level 6 and level 5. But now we see a card that is actually being played in Sprite uh, 2. Yes, it is. So this is the... I, I can't remember the name, actually, but it allows you to special summon an Ice Barrier from the Grave when it's activated. So I guess we're not going to get that effect at the minute. Um, and it's very helpful in Sprite because it can turn just one Swap Frog into a totally awesome all by itself. But I guess in Ice Barrier, it's just going to be even more powerful. I hope, at least, than uh, in the Sprite deck. <laughs> yeah, you would guess so from the Freezing Chains. Uh, but no, that was it. So Usman gets to play. So the Shake of the Dead was probably actually quite truthful <laughs> from Matthew. And uh, we see another of those engines in the Pendulum deck. Uh, Makes a lot of sense, because uh, with the Dragon Slayer's cards, you discard a lot. And so Fenrir uh, is a great tool to just, you know, extend, but still give you a card that you can easily discard. And we do see the Super Heavy as well. Wow. I mean, Fenrir has been playing a million miles an hour here, and I, I guess he's, he's all right too, right? Because Matthew, all of his cards are face up. He's got none left in his hand. Yeah. I don't think the Freezing Chains actually does anything right now. So you have to control three yeah. or more Ice Barrier monsters. So this card just... Yeah, I think it just does actually nothing. And there's been starting with the bike, which I guess from people who remember the Super Heavy Samurai deck, I'm pretty sure the bike was a premium starter. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not even too sure why he activated it, because uh, he would bring back something, but it didn't seem like that uh, any merit. But yeah, just look once again at the speed from Usman, showing us uh, some of the new Magic Spectre combos, uh, or I guess... Yeah, as compared to when Dragos Layers was getting played back in uh, like tier elements uh, format, and do you know something very entertaining is that General Wayne uh, banishes spells and traps. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when you're playing Super Heavy Samurai now, you're never going to have any spells and traps in your grave. Isn't that isn't that fantastic? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually Fair helps enough. your opponent. And uh, we do see Ignister come down. A card we have not seen all match, right? No, no. not even once. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually going second, it's even better because uh, the additional disruption effect is actually insane because it doesn't target, so you can uh, you know easily get rid of a lot of cards. And uh, this could be a quick one because we get rid of the entire field from Matthew, and unless we are holding uh, another runic, uh, which doesn't seem like is the case. Uh <laughs> That's been showing off a bit here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we take those. I feel like he's got quite a lot of uh, attack. Probably more than 8,000 on the field. Got to make sure this is a fire, which I now guess two cars is. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's got... Okay, yeah, I think this might just be it.